Okay, here in round one, we've certainly got a keeper. Opponent mulligans and is on the play. We get a nice little turn two light walker as well, which is nice. Black green. Okay. I actually haven't seen this uh, color combination in, in limited yet. All right. A little reckless imp. So reckless. Minister of Pain. Not too shabby. I like getting a creature. Uh, I like getting a nice turn progression going early. I think I'm willing to let my Lightwalker die if he plays like a morph. I, I'm willing to make the trade. It does make our harsh sustenance worse, admittedly. But uh, considering I've got a 2-3 follow-up, I think I'm okay with that. And a grip full of removal. Alright, he can't block with the Imp, so that's actually not too scary for me. Alright, that's... Just get in there. Can you imagine if I had honors reward here? That'd be pretty, pretty sweet. Although dangerous against the, the black deck. So no exploitation happening here. We're just trying to get more creatures on board because I want my harsh sustenance to get better and I want to be able to use Enduring Victory to good value, which currently it still is. And Deathwind and harsh sustenance, definitely. question is, do I want to bust Harsh Sustenance early, or do I want to try and save it for the face, because it is one of those rare removal spells that can hit your opponent right in their face. So, let's see if we can kill something with Deathwind here. Oh, just Reckless Imp Beatdown. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. Ooh, Great Teacher's Decree. Well, it's a bit... Bit preemptive for the Great Teacher's Decree. I think what we're going to do is... I think we're going to Deathwind the Rats. It's not super exciting, I'll give you that, but it lets us get in for four and uh, set up a nice Great Teacher's Decree follow-up. Or an Enduring Victory if he's got a big fatty. I want to save the heart sustenance for his face because it could come down to the point where he's super low on life and uh, he wants to race. And heart sustenance is a really amazing card when your opponent's trying to race, I think, because they don't they don't account for it. Opponent's got two cards left in hand. Currently in a pretty good racing position since... Um, we've got Great Teacher's Decree and Harsh Sustenance, and we can deal with fatties with Enduring Victory. Oof, that's a tough one. All right, well, he didn't exploit, which is, I would say, a good sign. Um, so I can Great Teacher's Decree here, but then he can trade with my Lightwalker, so... I think that we're just going to swing with both. And I'm going to Enduring Victory and bolster my Lightwalker. Alright, so now we've got Flight. And Great Teacher's Decree still. If I get another land, I can even dash plus... Great Teacher's Decree, which is pretty insane. But then again, we don't get the... Then the Reckless Imp doesn't get the, the next line of that, I guess. Keep in mind, we're still in a pretty good racing position because of the harsh sustenance. Okay, Whisper of the Wilds, one card left. Still in a pretty good spot here. So let's...
So I could dash. But I think we're just going to swing for five. Well, let me think. Dash. I get in for seven. Blocks Minister. He takes five. He goes to seven. End of his turn, I Harsh Sustenance. Or I can hard cast, get in for five, have him block. He takes three, goes to nine. I think I'm just going to get in for five hard cast and leave up harsh sustenance. That way, next turn, I set up for a better Great Teacher's Decree. No blocks is pretty interesting. So this way, if he's got like a pump spell, I've got the sustenance response. Otherwise, I can sustenance his face, maybe, if it boils down to that. I think we're going to end a turn harsh sustenance him anyway. Noxious dragon. Yeah, that's actually still fine. All right. So we'll just... Harsh sustenance his face, and that should do it. We don't even have to show him the, the great teacher's decree. Because he blocks our three power guy and he still takes four. And he's tapped out, so no reason to show him Great Teacher's Decree that I can think of. None of our guys have first strike either, so we don't have to worry about, you know, killing the dragon and then uh, losing another one of our guys. But yeah, like I said, there's no reason to show him the, the Great Teacher's Decree. All right, so uh, successful game one, but our opponent did mulligan. And Minister of Pain seems like it's actually decent against us, to be honest. Typhoid Rats, too, is a little bit of early defense. So um, this doesn't look like a walk in the park by any means. Um, I don't know if we saw any spot removal from him, so I don't know if yet if there's any incentive to bring in Center Soul. I think we want to stick to our combat tricks. And Honor's Reward actually seems like it'd be really good. Because Harsh Sustenance Life Gain was definitely really good there. Um, so I don't think we've got any changes yet. Valor Stance seems slightly worse because we didn't see any four toughness guys. We just saw some little beaters. I mean, we saw the Noxious Dragon, but let's be honest. Do I really want a Valor Stance of a Noxious Dragon? That's some pretty good value for him. I'd almost rather like pressure point it and just tap it down for value. But... It's still early. He could still have four toughness guys that I need the Valorous Stance for. And if he has removal protection, I think we need to see more of his deck before we decide too many uh, sideboard changes. So let's try this again. Um, yeah. This hand's actually just fine. We have both colors. I mean, clearly we need lands, but we can start with a Dune Caster, dash something, dash the Imp, play it at some point. And Dune Caster will get better with Great Teacher's Decree as well. So, got that going for us. We do need to draw lands, but I'm hopeful. And if Reckless Imp dies, 
Soul Flare gets more value, which is cool. It's kind of a funny name on Soul Flare, because it sounds like Soul Flare. Or maybe that's just me. All right, Shambling Goblin. Actually, pretty nice, to be honest. Um, do we want to dash, or do we want to get a 1-1? One, one? Kind of want to dash, but I also want my heart sustenance to be better. Um, I think I want to play the goblin. Problem is if I, let me think, if I dash, all right, if I dash and I draw a land, next turn I guess I could dash again plus goblin. I think I'm going to dash. I feel like it makes better use of the mana. And it's like shocking my opponent. And that seems better right now than getting a 1-1. One, one. I'm not 100%. I don't know. Some people said I was using dash incorrectly, and I think that's that's difficult to measure. Did miss our land drop, though, which is important. Actually, did we lose our land drop? I guess our opponent's on the play, so... We didn't miss our land drop yet. This is the deciding turn. Unless our opponent missed the land drop, but I don't think they did. <laughs> they didn't. This is only their third turn. So Okay, so we could uh, still give the illusion that we have not missed a land drop. Hmm. It's actually my, my first time seeing that card uh, played, so it's very interesting. Land, please. Nope. All right. Hmm, guess we go Imp again. Kind of want to use that Minister of Pain. If I can get the Goblin out, the, pain, the Minister gets a lot better too. Gives something, negative two, negative two, and... So my opponent's got uh, five mana currently. Hopefully it's something I can Valor a stance if he's got a big old creature. I not guide. Not too intimidating. Guess we'll play the Shambling Goblin now. Pass. Opponent's got six lands now. If he's got Noxious Dragon, whatever, I can Valorous Stance it and not lose too much value. Well, Sadisi's got to die too. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Sacking guide, I'm guessing. That would be correct. So my opponent does get to Demonic Tutor, which is pretty strong. Imagine he's finding his Noxious Dragon, which is going to be slightly difficult to deal with. But we've got to just, at the moment, we're just trying to stay alive. So, Although maybe I don't need to kill Sadisi. I've got the Dunecaster to tap it down. Problem, of course, being I don't have any mana. Still can't draw land, sadly. Well, and I've got eight cards in hand. Yeah. So, chances are he probably found Noxious Dragon. Could have found something else, I suppose. 
I feel like I probably have to Valorous Stance his DC. I don't want to discard, so I guess we'll just kill it. Whatever. Trade a goblins for a rats. It's going to be tough to outrace a noxious dragon. He could have also found some bomb rare I'm unaware of. I mean, our opponent can cast anything he wants at this point, and we've been stuck on two lands for four turns, I think. All right, it's probably worse against us than a, uh, well, I mean, it's certainly going to be good with exploit, but. So, um, kind of tempted to play Minister, sacking the Goblin to kill the rats. It's not great, I admit. And it makes sustenance worse. But the upside is it doesn't give him exploit fodder. Because I feel like he's going to exploit trying to get value off of Death Fang. But then again, I guess he can just exploit whatever he plays. So that doesn't make sense. Let's just... Uh, I guess we just play Reckless Imp and pass. It makes me sack. I guess I sack the shambling goblin if he exploits and kill his typhoid rats, which isn't the worst. I'm hoping that this is the card he searched up, but we'll see. All right, morph. I forgot that we have uh, Hidden Dragon Slayer. I guess technically that's something I can do. Now I'm pretty tempted to exploit my Shambling Goblin. I mean, granted, he can just unmorph it, but... I'll take care of his Typhoid Rats, at least. So, Minister of Pain, Sack and Goblin. Oh, so he's going to exploit. He's going to make a sack. So, I guess we'll just sack the Goblin then. Oh, he didn't exploit. Hmm. I got to admit, I wasn't expecting that. All right. I guess he was just concerned. Well, defeat's pretty good too. All right, I'll tell you my thoughts. So, my thoughts are, if I play Minister of Pain and Sack the Goblin, I'm left with three creatures which makes Harsh Sustenance unable to kill Ruthless Death Fang. But it does kill Typhoid Rats and Morph and let me attack for three or two. But getting rid of his Typhoid Rats seems, seems good, honestly. Otherwise, what's my play? Play Minister, don't sack anything, attack for two, pass. That seems too dangerous. I think we got to take care of this morph now. I think I'm just going to play the minister, sack the goblin. We'll stick to that plan. I guess technically I could have done it post-combat too, but whatever. So he could still unmorph. Uh, you know, I don't know all the morph creatures yet in the format, so I guess we'll find out. So he took care of a Bowmaster, which is 
honestly a pretty good one to take out. So now we'll get in for two. Granted, we're still getting beat down by a Ruthless Death Fang, but... Um, we are at least only a mana away from Great Teacher's Decree, which gives us a good racing shot. And we have Harsh Sustenance close to being able to deal with Death Fang. All right, Flying Death Toucher is pretty good, but might have to harsh sustenance and just continue to swing, which isn't too bad. Uh, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's not the worst. Certainly can't afford to take seven next turn, so I guess we just sustenance and then attack for two. Definitely want great, great Teacher's Decree to be online soon. Three turn clock on the Ruthless Death Fang. No plays is good. Can't find our land though, which is problematic. Um, so I can defeat the Sadist, get in for four. Or I can play another creature. I think we defeat sadist and get in for four and that way we're we're straight up lethal if he doesn't have a blocker I mean we're lethal next turn theoretically All right, Reach of Shadows. It's going to make things slightly more difficult. Never f managed to find a fourth land. Jeez. That's pretty crazy. I guess we are running 16, but... I think the real bummer is not being able to cast Soul Flare. It's pretty sad. Soul Flare would be pretty awesome in this spot. So I guess how we stay alive now is Deathwind his thing if he only attacks with the Ruthless Death Fang. But if he activates, then I guess we won't show the, the death wind. All right. So it looks like we lose this one, but not much I can do about that. So he's got a lot of flyers. Maybe Dune, Dunecaster seemed pretty bad this game. I think I probably cut her. So, I mean, it could have tapped down Sadisi. I think Dunecaster just seemed terrible because we got killed by flyers while being mana deprived this whole game. So Dunecaster definitely looked bad. Um, maybe I just play the Ice Breakers instead of the Dune Caster. Just get another 2-3, I guess. Not that that's, not that upping our curve necessarily would help us, but 
I just think the cards we're losing against aren't what Dunecaster protects us against, if that makes sense. Okay, let's try it again. Hope we draw a little bit better. All right, game three, we'll play first. Mm, I don't really like this hand. No pressure, no black mana. I think we got to do better than that. Um, well, no white mana is a problem, but we do have Hidden Dragon Slayer potential, so let's keep it. If we find any land, we can at least morph it. And if we find a white mana, we can unmorph it. If we draw a white mana next turn, then we're in really good shape. So this hand is acceptable. All right. Okay. A lot of ramp on our opponent's end. Uh-oh. Well, that's a problem, unfortunately. And right when we find our white mana. Well, that's all right. I wonder if I leave the mana up if he's less incentivized to do stuff against it. I don't think so. I think we just get it out there. Maybe he's more tempted to kill. Like, I feel like if I play Lightwalker, maybe he's more tempted to kill that. Probably not. I think he wants to kill the morph. Oh, perfect. Well, because of his greed, he's going to get really punished here. So that worked out really nicely for us. He didn't see the Dragon Slayer, so I guess it 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 just it, it's one of those things where it turned out to be a greedy play for him, but it's not necessarily a greedy play if you don't know your opponent doesn't have hidden Dragon Slayer. You know what I mean? He might just uh I was going to say leave up a monument, uh, but he can't even, I guess, do the monument. Okay. It was actually okay. Now we get to play Soul Flayer with Lifelink, too, which is pretty cool. Okay. I don't think he exploits, but if he does, so be it. All right, he does. I'm willing to make that uh, exchange. So now we get a life-linking soul flare, which is kind of nice. I mean, I guess it makes these double heart sustenance in our hand look significantly worse, but that's okay. So let's get rid of the hidden dragon slayer. Get that lifelink. Now if he plays a Noxious Dragon, we can actually play the Sandcrafter Mage. And oh, I guess we can't attack with the Flare then, can we? Oh, that's too bad. So one card left in our opponent's hand. All right. Mage, bolster, three mana, three, three. Not too shabby. Plus, we've got Artful Maneuver. And we're ahead on the race, so maybe he's incentivized to stay back. We'll see. And I've got the out for Typhoid Rats, too, which is kind of nice.
Oh, we don't know what that is yet. Wouldn't mind drawing a cheap black creature and then harsh sustenancing that. Wait, what was it last time? Oh, it was the uh, the archer. It was the archer. Mm, okay. Well, we'll see if he double blocks, I guess. Hopefully he just single blocks. All right. Worked out well for us, thankfully. That was a good draw. Now we've got Harsh Sustenance, which can take out the Shield Bearer, but I'm in no rush to kill the Shield Bearer with a Harsh Sustenance. Especially if, he, if, he's just, if he's just leaving it back to block, then I'll just, end of his turn, kill it. All right, Bowmaster is pretty reasonable. Icebreaker. Well, it can get rid of his last card, but I have to lose a harsh sustenance for it. Got to admit, I'm not huge on that. I think I'd rather draw land or something, but I don't know what my... if See, if my opponent's last card were anything, you'd think he would have played it. So I think this Icebreaker is just going to end up more likely punishing me. So I could attack with both, and uh, I don't really like it. I could Harsh Sustenance the Shield Bearer, attack with both, and then Harsh Sustenance the Bowmaster. Two for one myself. Or I can just wait a little more patiently to find something to discard to Icebreaker so I don't have to get rid of my Sustenance. Go for a little bit more of a late game sort of plan. Let's try that. I just don't like the idea of throwing all of my resources at his board at the moment. And like I said, I don't think his last card was important because he missed a turn, you know. All right, him not attacking is a good sign. I think that we're going to, I think we're just going to wait, see if we draw a land, Minister of Pain, well, I guess I want to discard that, but could just play it. I think I just play it and pass. The reason I'm passing is um, if I can play the Icebreaker, I can just kill my opponent without actually ever swinging at him, which I think is pretty important. All right, well, Dragon Skill General, also good. All right, so now we pass once again. Kind of want him to just play something huge, tap out so I can more comfortably heart sustenance my opponent on my turn.
All right. Let's go for it, huh? So he's got removal here. We still get to swing in for the win. Okay. Well, close match. Um, ended up getting there in the end, thankfully. Uh, deck played okay for us. It's not quite as beat down as I like, but... And I guess missing our fourth land the entire game, too, was certainly problematic. But uh, we did end up getting there in the end, so that's good. All right. We'll see you in uh, round two.